Andy Statton and Young Hearts Run Free. It is uh, 27 minutes to 11 o'clock. BBC Oxford with Louisa Hannon. A very happy new year if you've just joined me. Today we're looking at Shakespeare. How relevant you think the work of the Bard is in 2010? Do you think it should still be taught in schools or is it time to, to scrap Shakespeare and move on to something, well, a lot more contemporary? 08459 311 111 is my number. And uh, I'd like you to, to tell me, when was the last time you read some Shakespeare? Be completely honest. Was it at school or have you picked up something recently and thought, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a go? And if so, what did you make of it? Drop me a text, 07786 200 952. Uh, Henry has been taking your calls this morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How are you? Did you have a good you? break? I did, lovely. Good. Very enjoyable. Good. It was, it's gone over far too quickly, hasn't Always it? Always the way. You get that no man's land I know. between Christmas and New Year and, and it all suddenly flies by. we're back again. Absolutely. Anyway, what have we been saying on the phones today? Well, I just had a good chat with Ivy and Tame mm-hmm. and she has just finished reading a Bernard Cornwall book and they're historical fiction yes. and it includes at the end of it the speech from Henry V, which is a... Uh, uh, Shakespeare, uh, Shakespeare, obviously a f- famous sort of uh, quote from Shakespeare. Yeah. Um, and she said that she used to read an awful lot more Shakespeare when she was younger and it was part of her curriculum and she had a book when she was younger and used to love it. But now it's just, once you're an adult, it becomes very hard to access it and it's not something you're just going to pick up because it's not easy reading. Because That's true, yeah. Maybe because it's not accessible language-wise or maybe because we're taught it in such a way as we learn how to pick out key quotes and we learn how to pick out the odd metaphor as opposed to learning how to love and appreciate the stories mm. and the language that it's written in. And so that when it gets to the, the stage when we're choosing what we're reading as opposed to choosing set text that we need at school age, yeah. it becomes harder because you have to sort of you think about what's actually going to be more enjoyable as a read, something you have to trawl through and use York Notes or some other guide to get yeah. your head around or, or if it's going to be something that's going to just be an easy read that you can just pick up and dip in and out of. So it's really whether possibly how Shakespeare Shakespeare's taught and whether we actually know, need to learn to appreciate the, the finer nuances of the language and uh, and really get more more to grips with how it's written as opposed to uh, its content and subject matter. I wonder how much of it is down to the, the fact that we are forced, if you like, to read it at school as well, the fact that it is a set text, we don't have an option, therefore, you know, you look back on it and think, oh, no, it was something I did at school, therefore I don't want to be reminded of it now. Well, exactly, and it's got those connotations with... As you say, the learning aspect of it and having to look through it and sitting there with a with a pencil circling around the yeah, key quotes. I remember and, it well. And trying to <laughs> memorise to be or not to be. Yes, I remember, you, yeah, I remember and those. It's, it's that sort of thing where you're learning how to jump through hoops in the exams as opposed to learning to love and appreciate yeah. the texts as as plays that uh, are going to be enjoyable reading in their own right. Yeah, it's very true. Thank you very much indeed, Henry. 08459 311 When did you last read some Shakespeare or maybe see a Shakespearean production? Perhaps you went up to, to Stratford when uh, David Tennant was starring in Hamlet and that kind of brought it back to life for you. Well, joining me now is Martin Baum, who's the author of The Best Selling to Be or not to be in it, a contemporary guide to Shakespeare using 21st century language. Martin, thank you ever so much for coming on the programme this morning. Is is this completely serious? And tell me more about this book. The book was my way of getting kids into Shakespeare for all the reasons that Henry said. So why is it necessary to update Shakespeare then? Why do we need to, to bring the language into the 21st century? Well, look, Shakespeare in his lifetime used over 20,000 words at a time when the average vocabulary was only 1,000. Now, you fast forward that 400 years, where you find abbreviated text is the vocabulary of the youth. You find the English language is is shrinking instead of expanding. And so my idea is to take the fear factor away from Shakespeare so kids can get a taster of it and move forward to the rich language. So is it more important, then, to understand the story before you start deciphering the language? I think it's important to get the accessibility and the fun factor over, and you take that fear away. Um, Intermission Theatre um, took a lead from what I did, and they put a production on for Julius Caesar on the end of last year. And the whole thing was done in street. A lot of flack, but it did the job. Why did you want to do this? What was it about Shakespeare that you thought needed to, to be brought up to date and be made more relevant to, to youngsters? I wanted, uh, I wanted youngsters to get a passion for it. But life has moved on. Renaissance language is a thing of the past, but it should be a thing to be 